they are uh, the so-called America's team. And uh, I have pointed out that this year uh, could be their year because usually what tears that team asunder um, has not been tearing that team asunder, whether it was Dak being out or uh, Tank Lawrence being out for as long as he's been. And uh, the draft, however, puts Micah Parsons in that uh, rush spot, and he's been putting up a defensive player Ooh. of the year resume, not defensive off defensive rookie of the year resume, defensive player of the year resume. He's fun, but it appears and 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 the coaching decisions sometimes will get him. But it appears they finally they have finally found the proper, or unfortunately for you, the wrong mix of injured or sick players that finally put them all together, wound up uh, hamstringing, hamstringing the Dallas Cowboys yesterday. And that's Amari Cooper being out with COVID-19 because he's unvaccinated. He now will miss this Thanksgiving game as well. There's no chance of him coming back in time, even if he gets negative tests. And, um, and then Tyron Smith, the left tackle. And then with Tank Lawrence and Randy Gregory out, those guys go out, and then C.D. Lamb goes out in the middle of the game. And that play in itself just shows you how things that would work for the Cowboys in previous weeks no longer working for the Cowboys right now. I mean, you got to go for you got to go for the end zone down sixteen to three mere seconds left on the clock. You got a first fresh set of downs because C.D. Lamb just caught a third down fresh set of downs reception. And you got to, with 20-some-on seconds to go, you got to take your shot to the end zone. And Dak takes his shot to the end zone to CeeDee Lamb, and it's not only picked off, but CeeDee Lamb hits his head on the turf. He's out for the rest of the game, and you have to wonder, if he doesn't clear concussion protocol, will the Cowboys be without Mm -hmm. Cooper and Lamb for Thanksgiving? Yep. And as we know, Dak Prescott leaping in the air and finding CeeDee Lamb was a touchdown game ender in new england without it you know cowboys might have lost that game and we might be seeing new england at the top of the conference without that one who'd have thought that being possible when lamb hit the end zone to wrap that game up in new england in week six so Dallas finally found the combination of the guys that they can't do without, they can't overcome, and Zeke got hurt in the game, and he was giving thumbs up to Aaron Andrews, but he didn't look all thumbs up very much the rest of the way. And they were out of sync, and they ran into a Kansas City team that is not only red hot, but red hot on defense. Who would have thought that? And the reason why is there's a new defensive player of the year candidate in town, folks. There's a new one in town. He wasn't playing earlier this year, which is part of the reason why he's new in town on that front this year, and maybe part of the reason why the Chiefs were not winning a lot earlier in the season. But his name is Chris Jones. His name is Chris Jones. And he is so good at playing football (laughs) and so good at running the game from the center of the defensive line from a tackle position, from stopping the run on the way to the pass, and if he's not stopping the run on the way to the pass, he's stopping the pass by not only sacking the guy, but batting the ball down. He is spectacular. And with Frank Clark now healthy, suddenly that team looks really, really good on defense, and they won a game yesterday in which Mahomes wasn't lighting it up either. So today's going to be the day we're going to hear Dallas sucks. They're not have no shot to win the conference. That's ridiculous. Just look at Del Tufo's Twitter. I know, well, I know that, but he's a <laughs> troll when it comes to football. He's a troll when it comes to football, whether it's hating on your team, whether it's hating on Brockman's team, whether it's pointing out how rich he is to have season tickets for two teams. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whether it's any of that. He's a troll when it comes to that. So don't pay him any mind. That's and true. don't pay anybody else any mind when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys today either. I I'm, won't. Because everyone's going to say they suck, they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year, and you cannot say that based off of all of this right now. It was a disappointing performance. They got their their derrieres handed to them. And, and you've got to tip the cap to a prideful, 
stout, top-notch, getting better with each week, two-time defending AFC championship team in the Kansas City Chiefs, who are absolutely a Super Bowl contender right now. And so is New England. I know we covered that ground last week, too, but New England is now currently sitting in the first place position in their division, and they have the Titans coming up this week. And if the Patriots win that game and the Ravens lose Sunday night football against the Browns, which is entirely possible, then the Patriots would be your one seed going into the rest (laughs) of the season coming out of... Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> the one seed. These are just facts. And I was pointing them out for that. weeks. So if you can't handle that truth, I was on that wall trying to provide you the mental blanket of protection. <laughs> seeing this coming. Okay? Because they're pulling the code red on the rest of the AFC again. I called that day after Halloween to watch out for it. So there's all of that. Kansas City looks terrific, and Dallas looked terrible, and that doesn't mean the Cowboys can't win the Super Bowl is basically my nuanced point. I could come out here and pound a table about how the Cowboys sucked, and they proved it yesterday, and they're not going to win a Super Bowl this year. That is nonsense. It's nonsense. They don't have their left left tackle. They didn't have their top two wide receivers. They haven't had their top pass rusher for weeks. Unless you want to say Micah Parsons is that, so you could say that too. And if Tank Lawrence and Randy Gregory come back soon and they got Parsons and and Amari Cooper doesn't get COVID again and CeeDee Lamb is healthy and Tyron Smith comes back, that's and, that's the key, and that's the way that this team can go into Christmas week with, as we know, more runway coming up in January. And I don't think, with all due respect to our third-hour guest today and our uh, mid-show guest tomorrow in Nick Sirianni, and uh, Ron Rivera of the Eagles and Washington football team. I still think this is going to be Dallas's division. I'm not concerned about that. But that's my, 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 I know that you you could say that there's more uh, objects in their rearview mirror getting closer than they appear. Eagle schedule is, Uh, they still got to do it. Easy down there. They still got to do it. They still have to win it. They still have to win it. And the margin for error is much tighter because of the way that they've started. But here come the Vegas Raiders on Thanksgiving. They're on a losing streak themselves. And they're going to have to do it, it appears, without Cooper and maybe Lamb. And Tyron Smith and everyone else that I've just mentioned. They're going to have to go into another game. And they're going to have to win that one. They should win that one. If they lose that one, then we'll come back after Thanksgiving and have a different conversation. Because they got three in a row on the road at New Orleans, at Washington, at the Giants. And then there's that big Week 17 game that could mean a, a, a difference in a bye week or not. Home against Arizona. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.